In today's show, the Miami Heat and Portland Trailblazers aren't talking trades in real life, but maybe we can get it done on the podcast. David Ramil and Wes Goldberg from Locked On Heat join the program, and we get into real fake trade negotiations for Damian Lillard. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a crossover edition of Locked On Heat and Locked On Blazers. I'm Wes Goldberg, joined by my Locked On Heat co-host, David Ramil, and the host of Locked On Blazers, Mike Richmond. However you're tuning in, YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app, thanks so much for making Locked On Podcast Network your first listen every day. All right, today is our mock Damian Lillard trade call between me and David, and the ho- we are the host of Locked On Heat, and then Mike Richmond, the host of Locked On Blazers. Here's the idea. Um... Since the Heat and the Blazers aren't talking, we figured we'd hop on a call and just do it ourselves. David, congrats. You've just been hired as the Miami Heat's general manager. Congrats to you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a promotion I've been looking forward to for a long time, but I, I think I can uh, – I've got big, big shoes to fill in Pat Riley there, but I can get it done. I would say it shocks nobody. I think it was just a long time coming. Everybody expected this. Mike, uh, congrats to you. You've been hired as the Blazers' general manager. <laughs> Didn't take long to replace Joe Cronin. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Joe. Uh, listen, a role that I've been preparing for since about the eighth grade, so I'm ready. I've been, I was in, I was in my college dorm room. I was in my parents' house in high school, ready to be an NBA GM. I was, I was poo pooing Rashard Lewis contracts way long Ooh. ago, so I, I've been ready for it. Practice. All right, very good. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be poo pooing some contracts on this phone call. Um, and then for me, uh, we need somebody to basically play moderator here. That's what I'm going to do. Shout out to moderators. Um, I'm also going to represent any other teams that we want to get involved in a multi-team deal. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh teams. I'm going to do my best to represent those teams. So the only rule is that we have to negotiate in good faith. Hmm. Everybody. We'll see what what they do in South Beach. (laughs) We have to abide uh, by the salary cap rules, obviously. These trades have to be legal. Um, and then we got to at least try to get a trade done by the end of the show. The goal is for us to get a trade done and for both sides, maybe not to leave happy, but not to leave pissed off and, and, and sad and, and all those things. We're going to try to get something done here. We're going to test everything uh, in the trade machine to make sure that it works. Um, but before we begin the trade call, Mike, a Blazers status update. Uh, how motivated are you as the Blazers general manager to honor Dame's trade request? And what are you looking for in a deal? I am, I would call myself very, but not extremely motivated. Uh, There is not a lot of on-court upside to bringing Dame back to the team because we're not trying to be particularly good this year. That is the collective we, uh, my pronouns, or my uh, my, uh, listeners will know about collective pronouns. They'll love it there. But we are good people of the Portland Trailblazers front office. We're we're motivated because we want to be bad. And Dame's going to prevent us from being bad because he's good at basketball. But... We also sat through last season and we're familiar with what Damian Lillard plus bad parts means. And it's not Mm -hmm. a particularly good team. So we're not super worried that Damian Lillard is going to propel this team towards the playoffs. We're comfortable moving forward, at least for a little bit with him on the roster. We're not we're not terrified of getting to Christmas with him. But if we can get this done, we don't want to bring him into media day in October. We want to be done. We want to wipe our hands with this and be finished and move in the new direction that we've clearly chosen this summer. And David, with that said, as the general manager of the Miami Heat, how badly do you want to get something done? How are you are you willing to even wait it out if it means um, that negotiations go into the season? Well, the reality is, Wes, we've got a really good core here with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and future bright superstars and Tyler Hero. We're confident in the ability to move forward and contend for a title. We were in the finals last year. We were uh, at one shot away from the finals the year before. We were in the finals just a few years ago in the. Uh, this does, this feels know. like I'm talking to somebody in the Heat's front the, office. It really does. Orlando. I feel like I'm a. I didn't want to feel like a journalist today. I wanted to. I had. Oh, well, you guys get to, you guys get the role play, and I'm stuck here as a journalist. Still. <laughs> I know, have seen three folks- runs. <laughs> three runs to the finals, basically in the last four seasons. We've got a really good <laughs> team here. But at the same time, when you have the ability to add a a superstar, a top 75 player in Damian Lillard that can complement 
the core that we have here with Jimmy, Tyler, and Bam, I think that's a, a good step. I think that's what's necessary, and we like to make dreams happen here in Miami. We say that all the time here when we're talking amongst the, each other in the front office, and and if we can make Dame's dream come true of winning a championship for the first time. I'm getting traded to the Orlando we... Magic. This isn't Disney World. <laughs> All right, thank you. That was, that was been, absolutely useless. All right. This was worse the than worse than throwing the your rings on the table, honestly. <laughs> this was this it's truly, truly a mess. But uh, yeah. you know, what an opportunity. I said the only role is good faith, and we come out right away with the posturing and everything like that. That's fine. That's fine. All right, we're gonna make All dreams right. come true here. <laughs> Let's get on the call. You guys take it away here. We finally oh. so you got Mike Richmond, Blazers general manager, David Ramil, the Miami Heat general manager. Uh, it's August 23rd, 8.42 p.m. Eastern Time. The phone rings. Take it away, guys. In my opinion, we, we don't need to negotiate. The Heat's best offer is the only offer worth taking. The short of the best version of it will just suck. What are we going to do? Be bad? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so call OKC. Unprotect that 2026 pick because we want that pick in 2024. Is it going to be the last pick in the in the in the first round? Yeah, probably. Sure, sure, or something like that. And it's going to be one of the it's going to be one of the low ones. But we want it. Put it on the table. We want an unprotected pick in 2028. We want an unprotected pick in 2030. We want the swaps, the right to swap in 2025 and 2027. Uh, will we exercise those? No, because the Blazers are going to be good in 2027, y'all. And so they're not even going to need to exercise that pick with the lowly heat that will be elderly and no good by then. But we want it on the table because we want everything. We can figure wow. out what we do with Tyler Hero in a little bit. But we don't want him. But he's got to be in the trade for the money. Uh, we're taking the two youngsters, Nikola Jovic and Jaime Jaquez, uh, just because you need young people and we could use some folks on the roster taller than six foot four. Uh, legally, I think you're allowed to add those players, but it's unclear based on the folks who work in the front office alongside me. Um and the money to make the money work, we will take Duncan Robinson uh, because okay. he's got the long term money. And that seems to be more appealing, in my opinion, than the than the Kyle Lowry route. Uh, but short of that, I don't care about Caleb Martin. I think he's a really good basketball player, but he's not going to help what we want to do. Short of that, we will just march into being one of the five worst teams in the NBA. And we're happy to do so. Well, I, that, that sounds like a, a, a lot to take in there on our first call here since we're just meeting each other for the first time. At the same time, oh, yeah, I, we I haven't hear... we haven't talked. That's right. We haven't talked all summer. I forgot. Yeah, you just got hired. I didn't even know who you were until two days ago. So, I mean, yeah. Well, how was your summer no... vacation? Just no, Mike just called yeah, no. up David. It's like, all right, here's what I got. I got you on speakerphone. I muted you, and I'm like kind of rolling my eyes at everybody else here in the office. Uh, anyway, at the same time, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying about Duncan. I, I appreciate that he, you know, had some good minutes here and there in the playoffs, but I don't know if that's the kind of route you want to go to. I, I think with the the roster that you're building, I really do think a, a guy like Kyle Lowry could really be a helpful player. Like he's a, a, a contract that ends after the season. You can buy him out if you want to at some point during the season, let him enter the free agent market uh, before the playoffs. And he's going to be a, a, a great voice in that locker room because he's such a good veteran. He's been here for just two years. I wish we could have had him for longer. Unfortunately, he's just toward, at the tail end of his career. I really think you should kind of pivot on the Duncan Robinson conversation and consider adding Kyle Lowry, even if it's just for the short term, half a season. I mean, like you uh, said, hey, the money hey, doesn't Mike, matter. Earmuffs. This is uh this is a call. Just this is just the moderator and the Heat's general manager now. David, interesting on the strategy here. So you you would prefer to keep Duncan Robinson then? Is this because you lost Max Struess in free agency and you just need some shooting coming off the bench? You'd rather just hey. We don't really need Lowry if we've got Damon Lillard. I'd rather keep Duncan Robinson. Is that kind of the idea here? I think or, so. Or yeah. Or is Kyle I, Lowry bad? Mike, no. earmuffs. <laughs> Come on. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that's what's uh, the 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 thought process that's, that's, is that we okay, want to keep Duncan. Uh, um, at the same time, I also think you know uh, we want to keep some of those picks that you talked about. We can't we can't mortgage our future so completely there, and so. There's a possibility of moving Tyler elsewhere, uh, something that we'll get into with our moderator here, and and potentially, you know, maybe get another pick or two. Maybe we can get another player out of it that might be useful for your future. But at least in the short term, I think Kyle Lowry is a better fit for Portland. Uh, you when, mentioned the picks. When, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, Mike. 
Uh, Kyle Lowry wouldn't be a hang up for us. We don't care, but okay. we like we'll we'll figure it out. He won't. He's not going to play. Um, so we'll figure out what he, we do with him. But he he won't be a hang up in in the um in this trade if it were to come to it, along with the the pick compensation. If there is a hang up, maybe it is the pick compensation. There, we got a phone call coming in from somebody who might be able to help out with the picks. We're gonna get to that next here on this crossover audition mock trade call, locked on Heat, locked on Blazers. After this. Hot dogs for a summer barbecue. You know you're already doing it, so why not get cash back with Ibotta? It's officially summer. You want to save some money. You can do so with Ibotta. It's such a great app. It's so easy to use. My wife's been using it for a long time. All you got to do is just, you know, you're buying groceries anyway. You can just enter the receipts using Ibotta's app, and you can save money. Who doesn't love to do that? The average Ibotta user earns 120 bucks per year that could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing that game you're dying to go to or the fancy dinner you've been craving right now ibotta is offering our listeners five dollars just for trying ibotta by using the code locked when you register just go to the app store or google play store and download the free ibotta app and use the code locked that's i-b-o-t-t-a in the google play or app store and use the code locked All right, back here, Locked On Heat, Locked On Blazers crossover edition. I've got these glasses on hmm. because that phone call that came in. I know who that is. from Oklahoma City General Manager Sam Presti. My good friend, Sam. Thanks, Thanks so again for, for uh, trading us Victor Oladipo for a pretend second-round pick. We appreciate that. We're going to probably waive him before the start of training camp. Um, all right, so, David, I hear that you need to uh, lift protections on this pick, we got a call from Mike, uh, the Blazers general manager. Maybe you know him. Uh, he's yep. insisting that you lift protections on this pick. So let's talk about it. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I don't think that there's much uh, in terms of our players that you'd want, but uh, an upcoming second round pick. And I'd also wonder if you might be willing to part with one of those young players. You've got a pretty full roster there. Is there any chance that you might be willing to move one of those uh, front court players that are currently on hmm. the roster? Uh, what are we talking about here? Because um, we do have a number of players um, that we could trade. Um, we're not really sure which one we would like to trade yet, but we do have some ideas of the guys that we think are going to ultimately make the team. Who who you who would you be offering in return? Well, not, well, I, you know, again, draft compensation to one uh, lift those protections, and then to pry Alexi uh, Pokushevsky off the roster. Is there any chance oh. that you might be willing to part with him? We could part with Poku, but I don't think that we could. You guys don't have cap space where you could absorb him. You need to find five million dollars worth of salary to send back here. <laughs> mm, okay. All right, that makes things a little bit more difficult than I had. That 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 is a little bit more challenging than. Um, wow, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Why don't we agree to just lift the protections? Uh, we would prefer that it's not protected anyway. You want to throw us that second round pick in the future? We could do that. Um, and if you need to loop us into a bigger trade call with you in the in Portland, we'd be all ears uh, in terms of maybe being a third team in that deal if we're able to get something that that makes sense to us. Sounds good. All right, I right. appreciate that. Good talk. All right. We'll talk later. Hanging up. All right. So that's how it's done, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that easy, huh? I should have. I don't. I don't have a sound effect for like a hang up the phone. I probably should have had that. Um, but uh, all right. So now those protections are lifted. Um, now you guys can uh, kind of haggle over the protections because at least now with that with that pick unprotected, that that 2024 first round pick becomes available. The Heat are now able to trade 2024, 2028 and 2030 first-round picks. That's three first-round picks that they can move, plus all the swaps that Mike was talking about, if that's something that you guys want to do. Are the, are the picks a holdup for the for the, for the the Heat? Uh, a team famously that doesn't use draft picks, they just mine undrafted gems, send them to Sioux Falls, and turn them into players who score a, a, just a stunning number of points during the Eastern Conference Finals. It's uh, are, Is there a holdup there? No, I don't think so. I think the, the picks... Uh... Seem like a, a appropriate value for a player of Dame's level, so I, I think we could include those picks for sure. Uh, just uh, also a possibility of maybe even getting an extra pick if we're able to find a taker for Tyler Hero. Well, yeah, I think, I that's, think where... that's that's going to be the holdup for us because we do not have, we don't we 
the way our roster is constructed, we can't really value Tyler Hero. And uh, let me, uh, I'll expand on that for, obviously, you know, David, as the GM of the Heat, but perhaps others listening in on the trade call uh, could use some expounding. The Blazers are chock full of guards. They have a Tyler Hero at home. His name is Anthony Simons. Whether you think Anthony Simons is way better or way worse just depends on probably which side of the country you might happen to live on. Uh, but regardless <laughs> of, of your perception, the two of them, they don't function well together. You're, you've only got 96 minutes for guards. The Blazers already have Scoot Henderson and Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simons. Even if they were to prefer Tyler Hero, then they've got to still find a home for Anthony Simons. So I think it makes more sense just to start the trade here, figuring out where Tyler Hero goes and the most value you can get for him. Because while he is a good player, he is more valuable to the Blazers as a tradable asset than a person who would perform on the court because they just don't have room for him. So do you want us to pull off the trade for Tyler beforehand, or is that a discussion that you, you can loop? Can... You can loop it in a, as part of it, um, but I do think the onus is on the Heat to find it because Tyler's the best player they're sending back by a, a lot, right? Um, and while he, while his future as an All Star participant, I think is, uh, we'll call it hotly debated. Uh, <laughs> I, I think he's certainly the thing that you could trade to to sweeten the pot. Um, and so I would say the onus is on the heat to go ahead and sweeten this pot. Because like I said, what are we going to do? Be bad? We're not afraid of being bad. So I guess the call then comes out to another uh, GM. I guess it would be Sean Marks of the Brooklyn Nets. Does Sean Marks have glasses? I don't think he does. He's like kind he of does cool, not. right? He's a cool he, guy. He wears them sometimes, but he, I don't think he wears them like regularly, though. So, Probably doesn't uh, need him for a phone call. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I am, I am Sean Marks, uh, general manager of the Brooklyn Nets. Or, I'll, you know what? You guys aren't taking on other people's. Th- I'm just the new GM of the Brooklyn Nets. Okay. Um, what's up? Uh, no, just want to see. Uh, you know, if you, there's a possible interest in acquiring Tyler here, you've got this great young core. You're going to be winning a lot of games. But you need some scoring punch. Cam Thomas just isn't that guy. You want uh, somebody who's who's been there in the finals, who's shown that he can – Come up on the biggest stage possible. I, I, I look. I hate partying with Tyler Hero. He's like a second son to me here in Miami. But at the same time, is there any possibility that you might be interested in taking on Tyler? We would be interested in taking on somebody like Tyler Hero. Uh, we value him as a scorer. Uh, I think we have a need for a player like that on the roster. You mentioned Cam Thomas. We're very high on Cam Thomas. We're not ready to give up on Cam Thomas. Uh, but we would like a point guard uh, or a scoring guard who passes, you know, at least once a game. Um, and Tyler Hero certainly fits the bill there. What were you thinking in terms of compensation? Well, uh, before I even get into that, is there a preference over a player like Tyler or anybody that might be on the Blazers roster? Just out of curiosity. That's actually a very good question. I To go back to Mike's point here, and this is me more playing moderator, the Tyler Hero, Anthony Simons debate is, is a, a, a worthwhile debate, although I think... Portland, and and correct me, Mike, if I'm wrong here, would prefer to keep Simons only because he's their dude, right? And I think that does matter. It's not just a, a, that's not a flippant point. He's their guy. They like him a lot. He's homegrown. You keep him. Um, And in terms of money, it's virtually, it's roughly the same. He's making 24.1 million. Tyler Hero's making 27 million. If we're really counting pennies at some point in a trade, maybe, but I, I don't really see like in terms of contract value, it making sense to pick Hero over Simons or any, or, or even vice versa for any team. Um, so that's just my moderator take transitioning back to Brooklyn Nets general manager. No, I think we, we like Tyler hero. We think he would love the fashion scene up here in New York. Uh, he's flashy enough for us. We're looking for uh, a guy just like Tyler hero. Um, and we, you know, we think he makes sense next to our young core of Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson and Ben Simmons. So knowing that then do you have two first round picks that you'd be willing to offer in exchange for Tyler hero. We would be uh, we would be interested in trading one first round pick and a future second round pick as well. We could we could listen on second round picks. We can negotiate that for sure. Okay. Oh, what, what second round picks do you have available that you'd be willing to include? Do you know that? If you don't know that off the top of your head, it doesn't matter. Let's just. Uh, you know what? I I can put my glasses on, but I'd really prefer not to. Uh, just know that we have <laughs> they got several picks second in round 20, picks in the twenty twenty six twenty twenty six. 2028, 2029, their own second rounders, and 2030, their own second rounders. So we have four available to to, yeah. to play with here. Okay, yeah. very good. Um, in terms of salary, 
Um, I know that there's been some rumors out there that we would be interested in trading Ben Simmons and including him in this deal. We're not. We actually are very high on Ben Simmons. We don't have a very much interest in trading him right now when his value is arguably at his lowest. Um, we really kind of want to see what it is that he's got here. If you're looking for some salary going back, we could listen on Spencer Dinwiddie and his expiring contract. Um, we would also be willing to listen about Dorian Finney-Smith and Royce O'Neal, if though any of those players are players that would interest Portland? Um, we aren't super interested in a wing, necessarily, as we get looped in on this three-way call all of a sudden. Uh, Rudy, <laughs> that's Thank you. <laughs> my man. My man. Uh, we would be interested in uh, young big man Dayron Sharp because uh, I just got a call from my assistant GM and says you are allowed to add players taller than six foot ten. And that's huge. That's huge news for us. We actually have spent the last year operating under the uh, under the impression that you cannot add tall players to the roster. So that's really, really big for us. We're super <laughs> excited to learn that you can add a tall person. Um, and we are heavily, heavily eyeing the 2027 first rounder, one through eight protected that that is from Philadelphia because um the stinks. The stink is coming for Philly. The stink is really coming. So if it twenty, if, if there is a pick that you're willing to get rid of down the line, twenty twenty seven from Philly would be very enticing uh, in this particular deal. Um, we would we could listen on Dayron Sharp. We just drafted Noah Clowney, um, and I think we're really excited about him. Uh, and obviously, we have uh, Nick Claxton, who we think is the best center in the Eastern Conference outside of Joel Embiid. <laughs> so. Um, Heat fans, do not get upset with me. I am playing the general manager of the Brooklyn Nets. Please don't get come at me. In the Truly comments. perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> sometimes stuff goes over our listeners' heads. They, they, okay. Um, all right. Um, so we've got Dayron Sharp. That 2027 Philly pick, that's okay with us. That's okay with us. We we we're comfortable with it being a top eight protected pick. You got you can we we can send that one out. We can haggle over the second round picks. We still need some other salary going back. Um, I believe here. Yeah, because that's $27 million coming in and $2 million leaving. So we need to make up the difference of about $25 million here. Uh, could we interest you in Spencer Dinwiddie's expiring? Could we interest you in uh, a Royce O'Neal expiring? What are their combined what salaries? Combined, that's about it's twenty nine and a half million. So then we'd have to send some other stuff around about. But um, I, I think the Blazers could be interested in an expiring, depending on what um, what the Heat would like. Uh, Royce would be a better, just like a, he'd be a more helpful basketball player for the Miami Heat. But the Blazers have no problem if uh, if for sour reasons we need to take on Royce. So I'm looking here. If we were to. Uh, yeah, if we were to include Spencer Dinwiddie and that expiring going to Portland and Royce O'Neal going to Miami, the money is almost there. That actually works. Um, yeah, that actually right. works, uh, with the first round picks. So that's Damian Lillard and Royce O'Neal going to Miami. Portland gets Spencer Dinwiddie, Duncan Robinson, Jaime Hakez Jr., Nikola Jovic, Dayron Sharp, and Brooklyn gets Tyler Hero. And then those picks obviously move, uh, the ones that we talked about. So Portland would be getting uh, the 2027 top eight protected pick from Brooklyn via Philadelphia and the three first round picks from Miami. And then whatever loose change second round picks doesn't really matter. It's not that interesting to talk about. Now we so, were looking at and, moving Lowry instead of Robinson, though. That's right. So. Let's take Duncan Robinson out of the deal. Let's move Kyle Lowry into the deal. And now Portland is getting Lowry and Dinwiddie. Is that a sticking point? It gets dicey because we don't need two veteran guards that we have to like basically pay to leave. Doesn't make sense for us. Um, is there a team we think that would be interested in the Spencer Dinwiddie experience? <laughs> I don't know that Miami needs him that badly. I, I don't think that uh, – I don't think that – I guess, I mean, he would ostensibly fill in the role for Kyle Lowry as a guy that could be Dame's backup. And I guess in that role he might be a capable 
What's his? How, what's, how much longer does he have? He's just one more year, one year left. It's at twenty million though, so now we're getting a bunch of stuff involved here. Um, so so I don't know that Miami could take him on. I don't know, but if it's if it's the Lowry contract, let me let me pull up the better trade machine here. People in the, people in the know know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so let's say we got Lowry going to Portland. Tyler goes to Brooklyn. Hakez goes to Portland. Jovic to well, Portland. Let's not let's not necessarily include those young players yet. Uh, that's a uh, moderator's taking a little bit of a leap there. We'd be happy to hang up the phone without the young players included. We're you know we've 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 really we've been interested in the trade call, but we'd be happy just to move on into into uh, in the regular season with our bad basketball team. <laughs> so you. You are dead set on getting both Jaime Hakez Jr. and Nikola Jovic? The, we, as an organization, need young players with upside in the return for Damian Lillard. The draft compensation alone is valuable, but those players are down the line. A 2030 draft pick is a seventh grader. Uh, as you know, I'm sure you and your, uh, your, your small but very capable front office is heavy scouting the middle school scene. But we don't need seventh graders. We need like a, a teenager who... Um, is killing it for Serbia and the world cup, et cetera, et cetera. And, and um, while Hakez is probably more of a, you know, he's, he's probably closer to what he's going to be. He's 23, 24. We want youngsters that can grow with this team. You're getting Damian Lillard for a chance to win a title. I, I hear all that. It just, it just seems like you've already got this glut of wing players. You just weren't willing to take on a better wing player in Tyler hero. I don't understand the need for, both Hakez and Jovic. I mean, that- well, I mean, I mean, like the the height alone is the difference, right? Like, uh, <laughs> Jaime, Jaime Hakez is much closer to a power forward, and Tyler Hero is much closer to a point guard, right? Like in the grand scheme of of who they are as players, and and Jovic is right. is is a, a tall person. He might not be. We, um, we view him more as a point guard here in Miami. That's all. <laughs> uh, now's we're a good time to take forward. a break. Uh, we're gonna get. Uh, to the rest of this Brooklyn Nets third team deal uh, here after this crossover edition, Locked on Heat, Locked on Blazers. Welcome back to a crossover episode of Locked on Heat and Locked on Blazers. Mock trade call, trying to get Damian Lillard to Miami, trying to make the Portland Trail Blazers happy here. Um, we are on the phone with the Brooklyn Nets, thanks again for making the Lockdown Podcast Network your first listen every day. Um, so I tried doing something where Spencer Dinwiddie actually goes to Miami and Rose O'Neill goes to Portland, and it doesn't exactly work. The Heat would have to move $3.4 million out. Um, but you guys were breaking down the Hakez Jovic thing while I was playing with the trade machine. Um, David, are you going to be okay with moving off of Hakez and Jovic if it means getting Damian Lillard in part of a larger trade, or is this going to be a hang-up for you too? Uh, not necessarily a hang-up. I just, I just wonder about the their viability and down the road. And, you know, you're, you get a little thinner of a roster there, not a lot of options as free agents, although, of course, we've been rumored to bring in Kelly Oubre, maybe Christian Wood and things of that sort to kind of build around them, at least in the sh- short-term players. But, you know, to, to get those young players, at least one of those young players under contract – does Portland, by any chance, have any interest in a Caleb Martin? Like he's a he's a under a good contract now, but he's he's instead of Jovic again. and Hakas. Yes. Why would the Heat want that? Why do the Heat? Excuse me. Why do why do the Heat prefer uh bef- prefer keeping the youngsters and and not Martin? Because he's a free agent, and Miami can't afford to pay him once he becomes a free agent. But you wouldn't be tied to any restrictions like that. Right, but don't, aren't the Miami Heat trying to be as good as possible in May and June of 2024? Well, like, if, if Miami's getting Royce O'Neal back, then it wouldn't sting as much to lose Caleb Martin. That's the only reason why I'd be entertaining it right now. Uh, I, I think in the long run, yeah, I mean, over in the short term, um, I think Miami would prefer Caleb Martin. But it, given now that we've expanded the parameters to include a potential Royce O'Neal acquisition, Miami would be a little bit more willing to take on – I'm sorry, to, to move on from Caleb Martin. Uh, Caleb Martin is is like good at basketball. I like I really like him. He's from Winston Salem. Shout out to the Dash. Um, but like t- specifically to the 
the, the, the Blazers GM is also like a North Carolina native. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, specifically to our needs, we're much more interested in the youngsters under team control than we are as a, an expiring deal of like a good, helpful basketball player who just scored 27 points in the Eastern Conference Finals. He, he like he's he's young D Wade, right? Like he was, he's he's ascending, <laughs> ascending. I, to me, if this is the hang up, it seems like I. To, it seems like to me that the heat and I don't want to, you know, obviously you, you're running your, your franchise the way you, you would like to, but uh, it's the ground. Be, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> would be uh, more, it would be more beneficial to have more dudes you could count on in the playoffs than players that you are saying like, well, I really don't want to get burned in 2025 because like, what if, what if Jovic becomes the guy we think he can become? Uh, but if that's, if that's the hang up, we are willing to wait. Um, I, w- I want to ask this kind of out of character. Does does the Heat's playoff run this year change the way you feel about the team? Because they were so mediocre. I listened to your guys' show during the regular season. You respectfully weren't weren't big time believers even in like February. Yeah. Um, does the run in the playoffs change the way you feel about like, hey, we can stand pat and do it again? I I th- don't know if standing pat is realistic um just because you want to continue to add a, a superstar if you can't get one uh and to just improve your chances you look we, we we've gone to this point three times out of the last four seasons basically and fallen short each and every time and so uh, you need to add additional fire i think there's desperation worth. there on miami's part to just get this thing done and i think last year's regular season does show that this is not a team that can grind it out the entire regular season and then also do it in the playoffs and then also try to win a championship. Like they need to make things just a little bit easier. And Damon Lillard is the kind of guy that makes things easier or just another superstar in general, obviously would just make the sledding a little bit smoother. Um, can we put a pop, put a pin in the Brooklyn Nets phone call? Cause right now I'm just going to tell you how we have left it here. We've got Lillard and Rose O'Neal going to Miami. We've got Tyler hero going to Brooklyn and the trailblazers get, Jaime Hakez Jr., Nikola Jovic, Dayron Sharp, and then the expiring contracts of Spencer Dinwiddie and Kyle Lowry. I know that we're still debating the Jovic and Hakez thing. I know that we're still trying to figure out, okay, what really happens with Lowry and Dinwiddie? Can we reroute them other places? We can get a fourth team involved. I'm happy to do that and hop on the phone as another general manager. But I think you have a call coming in from Milwaukee. Oh. Uh, hey, this is the general manager of the Milwaukee Bucks. We heard that Tyler Hero is is available. We'd be willing to trade draft compensation. We actually have a pick unlocked this year. We could trade a 2029 first round pick and some other stuff that I don't know if Portland's interested in it, but we'd be very interested in Tyler Hero bringing him back home uh, and having a young scorer coming off the bench for us. Um, We have Bobby Portis. We have Marjan Beauchamp. We have Grayson Allen. And we have that pick. Is that anything of interest to you? Mike Richmond, Blazers general manager. The pick that they have, and correct me if I'm wrong, the pick that you have, correct me if I'm wrong, is the 2024 pick that New Orleans can flip. Is that right? I was looking at the 2029 pick. Oh, sorry, 2029. Totally unencumbered 2029. Yeah. Um, got it. Because they don't... Um, yeah, I, I would... Even though banking on them being a little bit worse, the appeal of that Philly pick has has a lot more strength to me because i um i read the news i seems like it's going the wrong it seems like it's going the wrong direction um so uh the earlier you know a couple years earlier and the likelihood that they'll be bad although who knows what's going to happen with milwaukee right um it's hard to say it's just that's further down the line it has less appeal so i would prefer that 2027 philly pick we would prefer that 2027 philly pick uh via brooklyn uh, all right, good talk. Um, hanging up from the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, all right, this is another phone call coming in. <laughs> this is the GM of the Toronto Raptors. Uh oh. I think we'd be very much interested in Tyler Hero. I know Portland. You're looking for a big man. We have Precious Achua, who we who we love, but we would be willing to part with him. Um, we have some other contracts. We have. The Otto Porter and and Dad Young expiring deals, um, who could play some wing for you if you're looking for a veteran presence there. Um, we could send back Gary Trent Jr.'s expiring contract. I know you guys already know him. There's some guard 
issues there, but it's not like the long-term commitment that you would be taking on with Tyler Hero. And you can always flip a guy like Gary Trent Jr. for some stuff at the deadline to a team that's need uh, a playoff team with in need of some scoring juice. Um, and we'd be very interested in adding Tyler hero to our young core. Uh, is any of that interesting to you? Um, it depends on what picks you're willing to give up. Um, unprotected in 2020, I guess the next pick they can trade from, from what I'm looking at next pick you're able to trade that I'm looking at is 2026 because they do not have a 2024 pick. So 2026 fully, fully unprotected 2026 and precious Achua, I think gets closer. I think I would, I'd be willing to um, have that discussion. We would do a top 18 protections on that pick. Uh, let's just do lottery protected. Cause we'd love to have the 15th pick in the draft. We could do lottery protected. Love to hear it. All right, so let's get the let's get Miami on the line here. <laughs> All right, let's talk this through. Let's talk this through. We've got Toronto on the line. David, Heat general manager. Um, the Raptors have agreed to send Precious Achua, Gary Trent Jr., and then for salary purposes, Otto Porter Jr.'s expiring contract and a future first round pick to Portland. Um. Would you be interested in parting with Tyler Hero, your three first round picks? And I think you need to throw Duncan Robinson's salary into this to make it work. Instead of Kyle Lowry. Instead of Kyle Lowry. Duncan Robinson would be headed to Portland in this in this framework. Uh, yes. That's you fine. would be willing to do that. Wow. Yeah. All right. So the deal here. Now, we haven't gotten yeses from everybody. The deal here is, let me just make sure here. Damian Lillard goes to Miami. Portland gets Duncan Robinson, Precious Achua, Gary Trent Jr., Otto Porter Jr., three first-round picks from Miami, the ones that we've already talked about, uh, a first-round pick from Toronto, and Toronto gets Tyler Hero, and that's the trade. Did we, we lose the young? Did we lose the young guys? We still got the young guys. The young Miami guys. That's not yeah, part of this framework. Ooh, I, I don't think we want Precious Achua. We want we want youngsters under uh, long term rookie control, like the two young. Uh, I, I am interested in players under four year and three year contracts, long term team control for a long rebuild. Well, how about one of them? Your pick. Uh, I, I guess it's Jovich because of the upside. I guess um, I think I like I, I personally like uh, with taking off the mask. I personally like Akis a lot better. But I, I guess it's Jovich in this, um, in this negotiation. Okay, we'll include Jovich in the deal. All right. So you're calling this into the league office. <laughs> Press the button. <laughs> There we go. Adam Adam Silver here. I don't think that this is part of his job description. <laughs> There's no way Adam Silver takes the trade calls. He does not take calls, so not personally. Not. <laughs> Adam Silver. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. sorry. Looking behind the curtain. He doesn't write the memos either. That's not him. <laughs> Adam, Adam Silver here. Um, you guys have a trade call to report, as I understand it. It is Damian Lillard to Miami. Tyler Hero to Toronto. The Trailblazers get Gary Trent Jr., Duncan Robinson, Otto Porter Jr., Presa Chachua, and Nikola Jovic. You guys, Miami, you're sending a 2024, 2028, and 2030 unprotected picks to Portland. Is that right? That's correct. And then Toronto, your general manager. Yes, I'm here. Um, you are sending uh, that that whatever pick, the 2027 pick. What was it, Mike? Yeah, tw uh, lottery protected 2026 pick. And we'd also like the we'd also like the rights to swap twenty five and twenty seven with Miami just because um, we want to sell it to our people that we got this compensation from uh, from in exchange for the best player of the twenty first century as some who worked at the Miami Herald have termed him. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can do that. We don't care about the draft picks anyway. All right, <laughs> so we got swaps. We got all of it. Uh, twenty twenty five swap, and what was it? Twenty twenty seven swap. 2027 swap. All right. We're all good with this. We're good. 
All right, good. congratulations, everybody. <laughs> the trade is done. <laughs> the trade so is bad. done. That was last hard, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you played f six different general managers over the course of this call, and Adam Silver. So My I mean, you've, you've, you've you've <laughs> worn lots of ball. You're wearing all those hats at the same time. Yeah, it's impossible. That, uh, that was a know, tour think, de force. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess I can feel pretty good about keeping one of those young players. We still have Caleb who can contribute now. You know, it's a, it's it hurts to lose Tyler and his all star level potential, but I guess ultimately we do get David Lillard. And yeah, who cares about the draft picks? We'll figure it out five years later. And then for Portland's perspective, you add Precious Achua, a nice young center. Um, you do get Jovic, a nice young front court player. And Gary Trent, who you'll be able to flip for a pick. At we're going to have we're going to have to. He's the, basically a Tyler Hero thing again, but we'll just we wanted to get this done. We were motivated to get this done, so we'll figure out the Gary Trent Jr. mess later. His dad famously hated Portland, so welcome back Gary Trent Sr. Happy to have you. <laughs> um, okay. Can we loop in Brooklyn as a fourth team to, to acquire Gary Trent Jr.? Would they be willing to take on Gary Trent Jr.? I mean, we could do the whole Gary Trent Jr. phone call. I mean, why not? Uh, hey, what's up? What's going on? You still want to trade uh, Tyler Hero to me? Yeah, about that. Sorry. It turns out that uh, <laughs> Portland actually prefers uh, Toronto's deal. So as much as, you know, we'd love to be able to, to brighten the futures over at Brooklyn, uh, I think Gary Trent Jr. is now available. Uh, he's actually going to be shipped to Portland. Would you be willing to take on Gary Trent Jr. in a potential deal? Well, that's very disheartening because we were very much looking forward to adding Tyler Hero, who's going to be a multi-time all-star over the course of his career, <laughs> to our young core here. But uh, we are interested in Gary Trent Jr. We'd be willing to uh, trade Spencer Dinwiddie and, and a couple of second-round picks and make that happen. That would, that would be, be going to day. Blazers, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think we'd rather just hold on. At this point, rather hold on to Gary Trent and hold him hostage than get a Spencer Dinwiddie mm -hmm. expiring. Uh, I, we feel that uh, Trent will have more value in a in maybe in a standalone trade here in, in the coming months than, than trying to flip him there. Uh, and there's just no teams left because of the new CBA that can just absorb bad money. Yeah, that's very true. Um, anything with Daron Sharp I'm looking at, if that's even a possibility here. Um, the money's tough. All right. Uh, no, let's, 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 uh, we're let's interested to see how Cam Thomas works out and maybe something Gary Trent is something we circle the wagons on at the deadline, but this has been good, everybody. Uh, so Portland, from your perspective, um, you add some stuff in the front court, you add some young players, you like the return overall, and you got how many picks out of this? You got one, you got four first round picks and two first round pick swaps. Yeah, we feel comfortable with the draft compensation. Our roster's a little bit messy, but uh, we believe that we've got a we've we've got a path forward, and now we've got the assets to uh, continue to upgrade this team in the post Damian Lillard era. And we wish him well, and we look forward to his return in February, our lone national television game on TNT. <laughs> um, well, from the commissioner Adam Silver himself, we thank you for getting in, a, in a, on a phone call. <laughs> and figuring out this trade and this way it's not hovering over the entire season. And now we could focus on what really matters basketball games uh, until the next star demands a trade. What's that going on? James Harden. Sorry. No, James! Got, other things, got other things to attend to. That'll do it for us today. Thanks for making locked on heat and locked on blazers. Your first listen every day, hit that subscribe button on YouTube, follow both of those shows on your favorite podcast app for what's really going to go down in the Damian Lillard saga. But this has been real guys. A lot of fun. Uh, good times. We'll talk to you guys soon.